and welcome to Summer at Cox Campus. We're so excited to be with you today. And today, uh, we're going to be learning and singing all together. And I'm so excited to be with you all. And our event today is brought to you by the James M. Cox Foundation. And I hope if you haven't already, you'll create your own free account at coxcampus.org. So we are so excited to be with you and for our event today, today is session three, multiple reads, and we're going to be learning together. And so for that, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Jen. Hello, all my special friends. I'm so glad you're back with us again. I missed you. Did you have a good week? I hope you did. Well, today, are you ready to dance, sing, play, and read together? I am so excited because I have a special book and a special guest with me. Let's all welcome Mr. Tim. Hey everybody, hey Jen. Hello, Mr. Tim. How's it going? Good to be here. So Mr. Tim. Yeah. We were wondering, mm -hmm. we heard you have a job. And with this job, you take parts. Yeah. Put them together. Yes. And make something. I do. What do you make? I make music. <gasps> music? Yeah, I'm a musician, Jen. That's so cool. Yeah. Dancing and singing to music. Totally. Do you play to make the music? Ah, the that's the fun part. So I play the saxophone. The saxophone? Yeah. You mean like this? Check it out. So there you see the saxophone with all of its parts. Now, Jen, I understand that you love reading and you love books. I do. Yeah. I do. All right. Maybe some of our friends out here do as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Check this out. I found a book just the other day called Parts by Ted Arnold, and it's all about our body parts. Should we have a read? Yes, please. Let's do it. Parts by Ted Arnold. I just don't know what's going on or why it has to be, but every day it's something worse. What's happening to me? I think it was three days ago I first became aware that in my comb were caught a couple pieces of hair. I stared at them amazed and more than just a bit appalled to think that I was only five and starting to go bald. Then later on, I don't recall exactly when it was, I lifted up my shirt and found this little piece of fuzz. I stared at it amazed and wondered, what's this all about? But then I understood it was my stuffing coming out. Next day, when I was outside playing with the water hose, I saw that little bits of skin were peeling from my toes. I stared at them amazed, and then I gave a little groan to think that pretty soon I might be peeled down to the bone. Then yesterday, before my bath, as I took off my clothes, a chunk of something gray and wet fell right out of my nose. I stared at it, amazed, and thought, I should be feeling pain. Well, wouldn't you if you just lost a little piece of your brain? So now, today, I'm sitting here, enjoying Dr. Seuss, and suddenly I realize a tooth is coming loose. I wiggle it, amazed, dismayed, too horrified to speak. Without my teeth, how can I eat already? I feel weak. Now, I'm really worried. I'm as scared as I can be, because finally what's happening is very clear to see. The glue that holds our parts together isn't 
calling me. And now I'm thinking to myself, what's next in line to go? Might be my ear, might be my eyeballs. One day I might be playing ball and have my arm fall off. Or maybe I could lose my head if suddenly I cough. Quite soon I'll be in pieces in a pile without a shape. Thank goodness dad keeps lots and lots and lots of masking tape. What? Tell me teeth fall out? And when they do, some brand new teeth will soon begin to sprout? My hair, my skin, and everything? There's nothing I should fear? So all of me is normal? Ooh, that's really good to hear. Then tell me, this yellow stuff I got out of my ear. The end. Hmm. Well, that sure was interesting. Mr. Tim, what did you think? I'm telling you, Jen, I love this book. I love the book parts. It was really cool, although it was really good to find out that it wasn't falling apart. Thank goodness, yes. I was worried the first time I read it, but then we find out. It's just his body. It's natural. It's all natural. So yeah. it's supposed to happen, except yeah. that green stuff. Yeah, what was that green stuff you think? It's natural, too. <laughs> well, that was just one of the questions I had, though, because there were some words that were a little bit vague. Yeah. And I didn't know what they were. What if we read it one more time? Hold about some of those words and talk about them. Yeah, we can talk about what they mean. Sweet. Good idea. Let's read it again. Cool. Parts by Ted Arnold. I just don't know what's going on, or why it has to be, but every day it's something worse. What's happening to me? If you look at his face, you can see that he looks really concerned. There's sweat coming off of him, he's still clutching his body, and he looks really confused. That means he doesn't know what's going on. He even asks, what's happening to me? That means he's curious. He wants to know what's going on. I think it was three days ago I first became aware that in my comb were caught a couple pieces of my hair. So he became aware, which means he just learned something or he just found out about something. It's something he now knows. And it was the first time he had ever experienced or seen hair in his comb. Look at his face. His eyes are really big. That sweat is still coming off of his body. And he does not know why there's hair in his comb. I stared at them, amazed and more. Then just a bit appalled to think that I was only five and starting to go bald. So when you're amazed, that means that you are kind of happily surprised. But when you're appalled, that means you're surprised, but not in a good way. That means you're kind of shocked. And he's saying he's kind of shocked. He's feeling appalled that he's going bald. That means he's not going to have any hair. And he's only five years old. He's only in pre-K. He should have all of his hair. It shouldn't all be falling out. Then later on, I don't recall exactly when it was, I lifted up my shirt and found this little piece of fuzz. So recall means he doesn't remember. So he doesn't remember exactly when it happened, but when he lifted up his shirt, he found some fuzz. And if you look, it's right there in his belly button. And still his eyes are huge. Sweat is coming off of him. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know why this is happening to him. I stared at it amazed. Remember that means you're happily surprised and wondered. That means you're wanting to know more what's this all about but then i understood it was my stuffing coming out <gasps> oh my goodness at first he thought "Ooh, this is kind of cool he was amazed but then 
Look at the shock. Look at his face. He thinks he's falling apart, that his stuffing is coming out. And if you've noticed, in the pictures, he plays with a lot of stuffed animals and dolls. And I bet those stuffed animals and dolls have stuffing in them. And he's probably seen that before. So he's probably thinking, oh my goodness, my stuffing's coming out. I'm filled with stuffing. I'm falling apart. My hair's coming out. And now all my fluff is coming out. Oh my goodness. Next day, when I was outside playing with the water hose, I saw that little bits of skin were peeling from my toes. Peeling means something is coming off. It's kind of like when you peel a banana, you're taking it off of the banana, the peel, and now his skin is peeling off of his toes. Look, he still doesn't understand. He still doesn't know why. Why is he falling apart? His hair is coming off. His fluff is coming out and now his skin is peeling off his toes. He doesn't understand. That means he doesn't know. I stared at them. That means he looked long and hard, amazed. Again, happily surprised. He thinks, okay, this is kind of interesting. This is kind of cool. And then I gave a little groan. A little groan is like a little noise like, oh no. <laughs> To think that pretty soon I might be peeled down to the bone. <gasps> oh goodness, he thinks because his skin is peeling off that he's not gonna have any skin left and all that he's going to have are his bones or his skeleton. Look, you can just see that his teeth are there and his skull and parts of his skeleton and then the other body parts are trailing out. They're coming off and he's really worried. You can still see that sweat coming off of him that all that's going to be left it is his skeleton or his bones. Then yesterday, before my bath, as I took off my clothes, a chunk of something gray and wet fell right out of my nose. <gasps> oh goodness, he was about to get in the bath and something, a piece of something gray and wet fell out of his nose. Do you think you know what it might be? Hmm. I stared at it, amazed, and thought, I should be feeling pain. Well, wouldn't you if you just lost a little piece of brain? So he looked at it long and hard. When he stares at it, he's looking long and hard. And at first he thought, oh, this is kind of neat. He was amazed. He thought this was kind of an interesting thing to happen. But then he thought, wait a minute, this should hurt. I should be feeling pain because he thinks he lost a piece of his brain. And you can see he's looking at the magnifying glass, he's inspecting his um, the piece of what he thinks is brain. And then you can see behind him, there are all of these reference books and non-fiction books that can give him facts and information about his body. And there's a book that he has open right now to the page called The Brain. And he has other books that <laughs> there's an encyclopedia, which gives a lot of information about a lot of different things. So he's trying to understand. Remember from the beginning, he has said he doesn't know what's happening to him. He thinks he's falling apart. So now he's trying to use his resources or books to try and understand what is happening. Why is this happening? He's trying to find the answers because he's not familiar with any of this. None of this has ever happened to him before. He hasn't had this experience, so he's trying to understand. So now today, I'm sitting here enjoying Dr. Seuss, and suddenly I realize a tooth is coming loose. So he's sitting there, he's reading a book, probably Green Eggs and Ham, and he's really liking it, he's enjoying it, and he suddenly realizes, that means all of a sudden, he knows something. He finds out that his tooth is coming loose. That means that his tooth is no longer secure in his gums. That means it's wiggling, it's moving, it's about to come out. And again, he's not familiar with this. This has never happened to him before. He's not had this experience before. So he doesn't understand. I wiggle it, amazed, dismayed, too horrified to speak. Without my teeth, how can I eat? Already I feel weak. So he wiggles it, that means he takes it and he moves it back and forth. And then again, he's amazed at first. He thinks, wow, this is really neat. But then 
he's dismayed, which means that he feels shocked and disappointed at the same time because he's not sure what this means. He's too horrified. That means he's too scared to speak. And without his teeth, he wonders, how will he be able to eat? He feels weak. He doesn't feel strong anymore. He doesn't understand. Now, I'm really worried. That means he doesn't know what's going to happen. So he feels a little anxious. I'm as scared as I can be. Because finally what's happening is very clear to see. So now he thinks he understands. He's so scared and he's worried because he's never had this experience. It's not something he's familiar with. But now he thinks he understands. It's clear to him. That means it's obvious to him or something that he now can know and understand. Let's see. Let's see what he thinks is happening. The glue that holds our parts together isn't holding me. Ah! That's what it looks like he's saying. Oh my goodness. He thinks he finally understands. He thinks he's falling apart, that he's coming undone. His hair is falling out. His fluff is coming out. His skin is peeling off. His brain is coming out of his nose. And now his teeth are falling out. He thinks he's completely coming apart and that he's not going to be a whole person anymore. He does not know what to do. He's falling apart. Not only did he not know about this, but no one ever told him about this. This is not something that's familiar to him. It's not something he's experienced. And now I'm thinking to myself, what's next in line to go? Might be my ears, might be my eyeballs. How's a kid to know? Oh, the poor guy. He thinks that his eyeballs might fall out next or his ears or something. No one has ever told him this would happen. No one has ever explained this to him before. Look at him. He's biting his nails. He still has that sweat coming out of his head. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know. One day I might be playing ball and have my arm fall off. So he thinks that because of all these other things coming off of his body, that maybe his arm could fall off. He's not sure. He doesn't know. Or maybe I could lose my head if suddenly I cough. Oh, goodness. He is so worried. He doesn't know. He doesn't understand. He thinks that maybe his head could fall off if he just coughs. Quite soon I'll be in pieces in a pile without a shape. Thank goodness dad keeps lots and lots and lots of masking tape. So he thinks he's going to fall apart. He thinks that he could cough and his head would fall off. He thinks that if he's playing baseball one day, his arm could fall off because he's experienced a wiggly tooth, his hair coming out in his comb. He thinks his brain has come out of his nose and he has um, experienced fluff coming out of his belly button. And so he's thinking, you know what? I'm falling apart. I'm, I'm going to be just a pile of pieces. So thankfully, I have this tape that will keep me together, that'll secure me and keep me all in one piece so that I am one little boy and not a pile of pieces. What? You forgot to tell me teeth fall out? And when they do, some brand new teeth will soon begin to sprout? So he's asking his parents, he's all taped up so he doesn't fall apart because we know tape is nice and sticky and it'll keep things stuck together. And he's saying to his parents, he's saying, wait a minute, you forgot to tell me that my teeth, my baby teeth will come out and that I'll get new adult teeth. And that when something sprouts, that means it um, grows or comes through. And look at his parents, they're, they're holding their hands up like, sorry, whoops. And they're even holding a book that says parenting for beginners so they're just realizing that they needed to tell him and inform him about his body they didn't realize that all of these things were happening to him and that he didn't understand so they feel a little guilty maybe a little bad for not telling him they're saying oops sorry my hair my skin and everything there's nothing I should fear. Fear means to be scared of. So he's saying, there's nothing I should be scared of. 
So all of me is normal? Whoa, that's really good to hear. So normal means that it's, everything is the way it's supposed to be, that everything is okay. And so now he feels relieved. He's thinking, oh, thank goodness, this is normal. All of these things that I've experienced um, with my body is normal. My hair, it's okay that it falls out. That fuzz that was in my belly button, that wasn't my stuffing, that was just some belly button lint. And that gray wet stuff, well, I think you know what that was coming out of his nose. And so they give him information. His parents reassure him. They let him know that this is normal. It's okay. And they explain to him what's happening to his body. So now that he understands, he doesn't have to be afraid. He doesn't have to worry. Now he knows. He's informed. Then tell me, what's this yellow stuff I got out of my ear? Ooh gross so now my question for you to answer with your teacher is why did the little boy put tape around his body hey, Mr. Tim. so glad we read that book another time me too i understand a lot of the words now that yeah. i haven't heard before some of those i hadn't either like recall yeah that was a big one yeah and wonder 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 what that means. Yeah. And amazed? Amazed. Yeah. I like amazed. To be excited and learn something. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking though, I understand the book better, but oftentimes I also want to go back and read it a third time Yeah. because then I can think more about the character mm -hmm. and how they feel yep. and what they're thinking, especially our character in the book parts. Yeah. Now, to help us understand those feelings, I believe you have a special surprise for us. Well, we, we mentioned it before, and Jen, yeah, I brought for all of our friends my saxophone with all of its parts. Look at all these parts, keys and buttons and all sorts of stuff. I thought maybe what we could do is read the book a third time, because one way that I love and really, really Try to express myself is actually through my saxophone. It's a way that I can get my feelings out. So could we try it again and maybe um I'll respond to some of the, the book? Yeah, let's think and then we can think about the feeling part. Let's give it a try. So let's read parts one more time. Oh Mr. Tim, do you remember the first page? Look at our character here. She's sweating. <laughs> I think that means he's getting scared. He's a little bit scared. Look, he's clutching his body. Yeah. His eyes are big and wide. I think he's scared. I just don't know what's going on or why it has to be, but every day it's something more. What's happening to me? Hmm. Those like sound like scared words. Yeah. And the sweat and the holding the body close, the big eyes. I think that's scared. Yep. He's nervous and scared. I think it was three days ago, I first became aware that in my comb were caught a couple pieces of hair. Oh, look at his face there, Mr. Tim. Hmm. He's still a little nervous because yep. we've got the sweat. Yep. But it looks like he's feeling like, you know, what's going on here? What's he's going starting on? to do that wondering that figuring it out yeah i stared at them amazed and more than just a little bit appalled to think that i was only five and starting to go bald his hair what's going you know if i lost a lot of hair i would be very freaked out this oh, is that's why we're at last i know yeah then later on, I don't recall exactly when it was, I lifted up my shirt and found this piece of fuzz. Hmm. He's finding more things and he's still nervous. They're not helping him relax. They're keeping him nervous. And we can see that with the sweat and the large scared eyes. Mm -hmm. I stared at it amazed and wondered, what's this all about? But then I understood it was my stocking. <laughs> Oh, he remembers what's happened to his toys from before. And he's remembered thinking, oh, maybe they were scared when they were falling apart. 
So I'm going to get scared too. Mm -hmm. Next day, when I was outside playing with the water hose, I saw that little bits of skin were peeling from my toes. It's happening in my head. It's happening in my toes. It's everywhere. I stared at them, amazed, and then I gave a little groan. <laughs> I think that pretty soon I might be peeled down to the bone. Very. Then yesterday, before my bath, as I took off my clothes, a chunk of something gray and wet fell right out of my nose. <clears throat> <clears throat> I stared at it, amazed and thought, I should be feeling pain. Bye. Oh no, he's noticing things are falling off of his body. And I'm sure he's remembering and thinking about times that something fell on him or he fell down. Yeah, anytime you feel pain. And he should feel pain. He's getting worried. Why isn't he feeling pain? He might be thinking his brain is falling out. Which is why we see a picture of the brain. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you if you just lost a little piece of brain? He does think his brain's falling out. That's what it is. That's not good. So now today I'm sitting here enjoying Dr. Sue. And suddenly I realize a tooth is coming loose. I wiggle it, amazed, dismayed, horrified to speak. Oh, now he's scared. Now he's horrified. He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. Look, he can't speak. He can't move. He's lying in bed. He's horrified. Mm -hmm. Without my teeth, how can I eat? Already I feel weak. That's why he's in bed. He doesn't think he has enough energy to move. Yeah. He's thinking about losing his teeth and not eating. Now I'm really worried. I'm as scared as I can be, because finally what's happening is very clear to see. Mm -hmm. The glue that holds our parts together. So he has an explanation. He's thought of an explanation. He's got it. But it's not a good explanation. Mm -hmm. We still see the sweat. We still see the big scary eyes. He thinks his body has glue, and the glue is falling. It's not there. It's falling apart. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking to myself, what's next in line to go? <gasps> so his mind's starting to race and wonder and think, what else? What's fallen out so far? What else could go? What other body parts do I have? Mm. Might be my ears. Might be my eyeball. <gasps> How's a kid to know? Mm. He's worrying that parts of his body are going to all fall off. Oh, no, and he continues to worry. Let's see. One day I might be playing ball and he uses his arm when we play ball and have my arm fall off. Ooh. Oh, he thinks it's going to fall off when he uses it because the glue is not keeping it there. Mm. Or maybe I could lose my head if suddenly I cough. <gasps> his head falling off <clears throat> because he uses his head and his mouth to cough. So he's thinking all the things could and then he uses them. Quite soon I'll be in pieces, a pile without a shape. He's oh. thinking about what his body would look like all under the, him. It would be terrible. If all the pieces were all apart. No, we can't have this happen. Thank goodness, Dad keeps lots and lots and lots of masking tapes. True. He has a little bit of a solution, though. Not bad. When I have a solution or he thinking. has it, he's, he's feeling a little bit better. His eyes are a little bit smaller. Yeah. His tongue is out. Normally that means you're thinking, you're yeah. planning, you're fixing. So he's probably thinking that things might get better. I love that. Oh, Ooh, I think that's a bit surprised. Uh huh. Looks very surprised. He looks very surprised. What is happening? And his parents look a little nervous too. I get a little smile. Yeah. Right. Oh. Whoops. Huh. What is the explanation of all this? They feel bad. They forgot to tell him something. Mm -hmm. You forget to tell me teeth fell out. And when they do, some brand new teeth will soon begin to sprout. Oh, okay. That's good. He's got to be feeling relieved. Definitely. Like, it's not as bad as I thought. Things are going to get better. Yeah. Okay. My hair, my skin, and everything. There's nothing I should fear. 
Oh, oh, Bobby, look at his smile now. Yeah. And his body's relaxing. He's not holding himself so tight anymore. Yep. And he's letting his parents take off the tape. Hey, the tape came off. So all of me is normal. Whew. That's really good to hear. He's relieved. Yes. Yep. Then tell me what's this yellow stuff I got out of my ear. But look, mm. he's scared this time. There's not as much sweat. You're right. There's no, I don't see There's any sweat. No, you're right. Maybe he's just becoming curious about his body. That's right. He's just noticing things. Yeah. He knows that it's okay. I love that. Yeah. Well, now I do really understand the book so much more. Do you? Yeah. Do you as well? Hmm. Can you say a feeling that our character had? What's one feeling that our character had, Mr. Tim? Uh, through a bunch of the book, it seemed like he was pretty nervous. He was very nervous. Yes. But Mr. Tim feeling at the end of the book? Well, at the end, when he found out that it isn't glue that holds our bodies together, it's natural that these things happen. He I seems so right. relieved. And even at the end, he almost seemed curious. That's right. He was relieved and happy and curious. Yeah. But it was interesting because when he was nervous, he was thinking about a lot of things. He was. And sort of picturing all the different ways he uses his body. Yeah. And that sort of made him a little bit more nervous because he was thinking about all the things that could fall off. Yeah. I'm glad his parents were able to tell him yep. and feel relieved. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, boys and girls, let's give a big round of applause and a thank you to Mr. Tim. Hey. Now, Mr. Tim is going to come back and join us next week. Yeah. And we're going to get to see even more about his saxophone. Yep. We'll bring this guy back next week. That was awesome! I loved having Mr. Tim here with us today and his saxophone, which was great. Now, as always, we want to double check and make sure that what we just did was making our brains grow stronger and bigger. So let's go ahead and hear from Ms. Crystal today all about the science behind what we just did. Hi, Anita. Hey, Crystal. Nice to see you again. It's so great to see you as well. And it is great to continue the conversation from the live that we just witnessed with Mr. Tim. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Multiple reads are okay, number one, and they are so very important to help with the, um, the learning experience with children and uh, just to expand the vocabulary and to just have fun, right, Anita? That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. So I want us to dive a little bit deeper because I feel like we will see so many connections with what we have on Cox campus and the resources that we share on Cox campus with what Mr. Tim has just shared with us. So let's let's dive a little bit deeper and share our PowerPoint and talk about it. And as we are sharing that, Anita, can you please introduce yourself to the audience and tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Anita Hasni Muhammad. I am a lead research and policy analyst at the Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning. That's one of just a handful of state level agencies dedicated to the first years of life and ensuring that children have a great safe place to go and learn and explore and be themselves. Um, prior to that, I earned my PhD in developmental psychology and have been doing research for about a decade now. So thanks again for having me, Crystal. Absolutely. It is always a pleasure to partner with you and Rollins and some of the uh, work that we've done with families and sharing resources there. And, and so partnering off the screen has been amazing, but now partnering on the screen today uh, will be just as amazing. So let's look at our reach strategy and uh, look at how it, again, ties so nicely in with what Mr. Tim has shared on our live for today. So let's look at what the research shares. The research tells us 
that interactive storybook reading is so very important. It not only supports learning and early, early literacy, um, but it also takes it a little bit deeper into what is already shared on our screen. When we repeat books with children, we actually give them the opportunity to hear the vocabulary words multiple times. That is so important. And as we encourage children to become the storytellers in the story, and we'll talk more about that shortly. And as we talk about the book, we give them a chance to use the language and vocabulary that is related to that storybook. And then research also shares with us that when children hear uh, the words, many times they develop a better understanding of the word and they're more likely to use that word themselves or use the words themselves. So that's very exciting to know. And so uh, again, our read strategy is something that we'll cover really quickly. And if you don't mind, Anita, I would love for you to just go deeper into the R today with our reach strategy that we highlighted. Thank you so much. Let's highlight what the strategy is really quickly. If you have your phones, go ahead and scan the QR code on the screen and you will be able to go right into Cox campus, right to where our resources are in this regard. Uh, but the read strategy simply says this, R, repeat the book. As Mr. Tim has already shared with us, it's okay to do that. Repetition is key. It's very good um, for children. And we will talk about today uh, how we can repeat the book and again, help that book to come alive. It has so much meaning. The E in the read strategy stands for engage and enjoy. That's where we get to become a kid all over again. We get to change our voice tone and match that of the characters and really just share in the experience with the child. A is all about asking questions. We want the children to use their vocabulary so we can ask questions, help them to think more critically and then allow them to uh, respond with answers and again, vocabulary. And then D is all about do more with the book and that's where the book gets to come um, alive just to just expand beyond um, the storybook read itself. So now, Anita, could you please just walk us through the R? Let's see those connections uh, to our strategy and what Mr. Tim shared. I'd be happy to, Crystal. Thanks so much. Um, so the read strategy is one of my favorite strategies from the Rollins Center. It's simple, it's straightforward, and everyone has had some sort of experience if they have a toddler and a book that that toddler wants to read the same book off the bookshelf every single time. And as a parent or caregiver, you are probably tired of reading the same book, but you can make it fun for yourself too. And this read strategy is a great way to do that. Every time you go through the book, you can have a different interaction, you can have a different conversation and your child will take something different away from it each and every time. So the Rollins Center recommends a few things you can do. The first couple of times you read the book, you can read it just to try to understand what's going on. You and your child can figure out who the characters are in the story, what the key events are, what the timeline is, what's happening, and what's from beginning to end, what's going to happen in this story. Um, the next couple of times you read the book, you want to go a little bit deeper. You want to look at those higher level thinking processes. Talk about what the characters are thinking, what they're feeling. Why are they thinking these things? Why are they feeling this way in relation to those key events that are going on? You might have some books that you're reading that don't have names for the characters or names for the places. You can go ahead and add those in to add more voice to that story, to relate that story to things in your everyday environment. Encourage your child to pick a name for that puppy in the story if it doesn't already have one. And then the last few times you read the book, you can actually invite your child to tell the story with you instead of going through the story yourself. By this point, you've read the book a few times, your child knows what's gonna happen. You can actually check their comprehension level this way. You can see how much they've taken from the book. You can use this time to point out some vocabulary words and it's absolutely okay to repeat the book. Um, we just wanna keep emphasizing that. Um, and you wanna read the book within a short amount of time, maybe within the span of a few days, within the span of a week, you can read it multiple times so that it's important your child get, gets the most out of that one story. 
Um, we also have a read strategy guide, which you see on the right hand side. Crystal can tell you more about that and how you can get access to it. So, Crystal? Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing, Anita. After hearing you, I want to hear a story read all over <laughs> again. So, thank you so much. As Anita has shared, there is a QR code right on your screen. Feel free to scan that code, it will take you into our Cox campus uh, resources. And uh, we would love to have you pull up the resources, download them, review them uh, so that you can make the most out of a storybook read. If you're not already on Cox campus, we invite you to join us there. It is absolutely free. <laughs> and you can invite a friend to join as well. Um, again, there are dis discussion boards, courses, resources, you name it, it is all on Cox campus. So please join us. Thank you, Anita, for sharing with us today. And thank you, viewers, for joining us after the live with Mr. Tim. Take care. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Yay. So it's so good to know that we can do one of my favorite things over and over again, which is keep reading our favorite books. And by reading our favorite books over and over and over again, our brains just go bigger and stronger. So with that, we are at the end of today's session. I'm so sorry that we have to see you go, but thank you for joining us and make sure you come back next week. Bye. Sorry, guys. Uh, thank you, Miss Jen. I had so much fun learning and reading today. And I hope we will see you all on Tuesday, August 3rd for our Family Read Out Louds. And if you haven't already, you can go to coxcampus.org and create your free account to get access to all our fun resources. So I hope we'll see you all on Tuesday. And make sure you join us and we'll see you next time.